Hey guys, what's up? Misha here, and I figured I would show you guys how I go about making a good rhythm tone. Honestly, it's not that difficult. I think a lot of people tend to overthink this, and sometimes overthinking it can make your tone a lot worse, <laughs> to put it simply. Uh, really, sometimes, especially when you have uh, good equipment, sometimes it's just best to keep it simple. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you, uh, this is this is what I've been using recently. Um, doesn't look like much, and that's because there really isn't much to it. Um, so just starting right off the bat, um, you know, we pick an amp model uh, and a cab. Now, this cab I'm using is from this upcoming Fractal Zilla pack that's, uh, I, that's coming out soon. I've been sort of beta testing it, but this is pretty much good to go. I, I really like, I really like this cab, uh, this, this balanced one. Um, and the amp that I've, uh, chosen for this patch is the PVH6160 block, which is based off of a PV5150 block letter amp, which is one of my favorite recording amps in real life. There's just something about that amp that sits perfectly in a mix. It just sits so, so well. Um, and that's one of the most important things that maybe a lot of people kind of take for granted or don't always realize uh, is how an amp sounds in the room doesn't always translate to the mix. But this amp does in real life, and the model on the Axe FX does as well. Um, as you can see, I'm on my Axe FX 2 version 3.3, uh, Quantum 3.03. Um, so I'd recommend that if you aren't uh, all the way up to date that you... Do update yours if you want it to sound like this. But just right off the bat, um, I've got everything pretty much flat. All right. Uh, if we turn off the bright switch, bring it, bring everything directly to noon, you'll hear that sounds like this. Now, I like the bright switch a lot because it gives you that kind of attack. All right. With that. It's kind of fatter, maybe better for rock if you're going to do chords in the back. But um, generally, I like the bright switch on. Um, I like giving it a little bit more drive just for the saturation. Generally, I like to set the drive kind of at this point where it's crunchy. If you set it too low, you get this really stringy sound, which can be really cool. But when you do sort of palm mutes and chords and things like that, it's a little bit anemic sounding. And if you go too crazy with the gain, it just gets kind of woofy and it becomes a bit much. So I like to find the sweet spot. Now this depends on your guitar, your pickups, and even your playing style. But for me, I've found that just slightly past noon seems to do the trick. Still getting the clarity there. Right? And, um, I mean, this is generally good. I turned the depth up just to give it a bit more girth there. But this is all, you know, generally I like to start with everything at noon. Uh, you'd imagine that most amps uh, should sound good with those settings, and then you kind of tweak from there. So you, know, you kind of get a feel for what all the different knobs do to the sound. Scoop sound. It's down if you want it to be mid forward. I think right in the middle is good for that. So that's pretty simple. Uh, and as you can see, that's just cab and amp. Now, one thing you can do, I put a compressor here, which um, you can't really see the gain reduction that's going on right now. Uh, you can look on the Axe FX. Um, and looking right now... Yeah, it's between like minus 8 to 10. But the important thing is I like to set the attack a little bit faster with this because that way it lets the note sort of come through before the compressor activates. Um, it's, it can sometimes chop your notes off, but uh, it, it can be good to sort of even out 
the sound in your playing. But generally, it's more of a feel thing. Um, you shouldn't be able to tell much of a difference in sound. <laughs> See, it sounds very similar. Uh, it's really more of a field thing, so you can experiment with that. And finally, one thing that a lot of people like to do, and I used to do this a lot more. I've been kind of happy without the drive as of late, but doing like a, a Tube Screamer style overdrive in front of the amp. Um, and the way to set this, the way I like to set this, is I actually take the drive pretty much all the way down turn the level all the way up. Now with this, you're getting a lot of extra gain, so I would actually bring the gain down to where it's sort of, it's crunchiest. So that's pretty crunchy there. And then you're making the gain back up with the drive. Actually, we could use a little bit more drive there, I think. Now, the nature of a tube screamer is such that it's actually going to cut a lot of your low frequencies, so you may want to make those back up by just being a little bit more low end with the depth and the bass. But that's kind of that uh, sound. You may recognize it. That's that's very much the sound of a drive in front of an amp. Um, so I personally tend to prefer it more with these kinds of settings. <laughs> all the harmonics and sort of the richness in the sound. But uh, anyways, as you can see, all this is pretty simple. You don't really even need the compressor, um, honestly, at all. <laughs> I just have it there in case you wanted to see what I do with that kind of stuff. Um, but hopefully this gives you some insight into how I go about making rhythm tones. So thanks for watching, guys.